It, it is true that, uh, that people with science degrees and medical backgrounds are, are not very well represented in our 650 odd MPs in the, in the UK Parliament and uh, that's clearly a deficit and uh, it, it's something really that we should act, actively work on to remedy. Um, I used to have colleagues who thought that we should train PhD students simply to be scientists and that if they went off into other careers such as accountancy or law somehow this was a loss. I've always disagreed with that point of view. I think it's very important that people with high levels of knowledge in science should branch out into, into other areas of society, law, I've just mentioned, and politics would be another one. There are, it's not, of course, an entirely true, certainly not on an international scale, and uh, one of my uh, co-Nobel Prize winners in 1997, Stephen Chu, entered heavily into U.S. politics and uh, uh, became, uh, he was involved in the, de the Department of Energy in, uh, in the United States, was highly, highly influential in, uh, in policies relating to energy, for example. So it, it is possible, and it does happen, that uh, scientists uh, get involved in, in political issues, but you're right in saying that it's, it's, it's rare. That's a very difficult question to answer, but I, th I think what, what you're doing is certainly helping to, to con contribute uh, to, to, uh, towards that goal. You've, you've drawn together people from uh, diverse backgrounds, mostly uh, originally uh, founded in science, but who have developed interest in business and in, in the promulgation and propagation of science uh, throughout, throughout many areas of the community and the, and the economy. I think this, this will inevitably have a beneficial and positive effect uh, by the year 2050, or hopefully before. I think one can, one can uh, rattle off a, a list of all kinds of, of major issues that will, will confront the current uh, generation of, of people who are graduating from university. <clears throat> One of them uh, on, a health, uh, on the health uh, front is the aging population and the consequences of, uh, of more and more people developing neurodegenerative diseases. We don't understand the etiology of these diseases, how they originate, what are the factors uh, that, that lead to them, so that's something that needs to be unraveled. We are making progress certainly with Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease to getting uh, an understanding of the basics of what is going wrong and that then provides a platform for first of all uh, early diagnosis which is key uh, if one is to treat uh, Alzheimer's disease I think it's already apparent that one needs to do it uh, before uh, the disease is symptomatic and that means developing new, new diagnostic tools that is happening, and once that has happened, then one can <coughs> start to uh, design interventions that would then uh, prevent the, 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 the disease from, from developing. And I think <coughs> the same is true of all of these uh, neurodegenerative diseases. We're at an early stage of understanding uh, how and why they arise, and therefore we haven't got so far yet, uh, too far yet. Uh, in, in developing prevention and cure, but it will come. I think we also have to think, of course, of, of what are we trying to do? Are we trying to make man live forever? And uh, we know that uh, we can uh, significantly change the lifespan of animals in, uh, 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 quite readily from, from a small number of mutations. Is this what we're trying to achieve uh, with mankind? I, th I think not. I think. Um, at least um, the people I talk to, what we're trying to do really is to ensure that there is a, uh, a good quality of life in the, in the, in the later stages of uh, current life expectancy rather than a, a rather degraded life that, that happens for some people from their 50s uh, onwards. And neurodegenerative disease, I think, is, is one issue. Clearly another issue is, is energy provision. We have to move away from uh, a fossil-based energy gen generation system. 
so that ultimately we're not dependent on fossil fuels at all. This may seem like a rather distant prospect, but uh, as I pointed out this morning, Earth is energy rich. There is, uh, energy is beaming down from the sun all of the time and we need to, to, to get better at harvesting that energy. We need to uh, work out technologies for uh, generating energies in, in other ways that avoid the use of a fossil fuel. Of course, we need to develop these new energy generating systems in a way that is more politically stable than the current, uh, the, the current situation where we depend on fuels that come from politically different uh, parts uh, of the world.